Hi there, Greg over DIY RV Home, Camper's Life. Today, finishing up a project I started, and that is I am replacing these dingy, yellowed out, incandescent, bulb style RV lighting in our fifth wheel to this pearly white, new LED style light. Same dimensions, so the holes line up very close. Uh, if you do have any discoloration in your ceiling from age, it will hide that for you. And very simple, easy to install. Now, the kit did come with a set of wire nets, little blue wire nets. First thing we're gonna do with those, we're gonna throw them away. Don't use them. Don't use wire nets in an RV. They do have some end splices available out on the market that you can pick up. Now you'll see these in most of the RVs uh, when you're opening and looking at wiring and stuff like that. They use them quite often. If you don't have availability of those, you still also have the regular butt connectors. Uh, the only thing with the regular butt connectors is generally they are a specific size throughout the entire thing. So an 8, 10, 12, whatever, you're working with an 8 wire and an 8 wire. In this case, we are going to go from about a 12 wire down to probably an 18 gauge right here. So you got two different wires. So there's a couple ways to make that work with the standard buck connectors. One is to actually just uh, strip a little extra of the smaller wire and bend it over on itself to fill up the gap when you crimp it down. The other way is you can solder it together and put some heat shrink tubing on it or you can use these end splices like we're going to use because you can go multi-size wires together. Don't ever take and cut wires to make them fit inside of one of these butt connectors because what you're doing is you're reducing the capacity of that right there. The pixies run on the outside, not on the inside of the wires. So without further ado, let's jump in. Let's get this thing changed out real quick. So these really easy. You just pinch, pull, show you it. Watch this. The power is on. We're working with DC 12 volt, low voltage. We're going to be safe when doing it, but you can do it live. So you safety guys out there, don't worry. I've got no metal on my hands. It's a silicone band. So let's get this thing going. Simple. If you don't have one of these screwdrivers, use a regular screwdriver. If you don't have the fancy dancy wire crimper, well, you can check down the link below where I've got this one, which is the iWIS, or go to the auto parts store, get you a little exp less expensive one just as long as you can get the proper crimp on it you're good you don't have to spend all that money so we're gonna drop that down now as you see we do have a larger hole and we're able to pull the wires out nice and easy don't go too crazy we don't know how much room they gave us extra wire and as we notice we've actually got Two larger, one smaller. Two larger, one smaller. Go figure. What that means is this is not an end run. The power is coming in and it's going out. So it's going out to another fixture in the line. Basically this wire continues and goes to it somewhere else. Supplying power. And we're just tapping off of it. Now, in this case, the wire nets, or excuse me, the end splices I have, are too small to fit both of the wires along with the third wire we're going to put in. So we're going to fudge a little bit. We're actually going to cut it down here. Yes, I know. Extra connection, extra resistance. We're pulling minimal amount of amps and pixies to this versus this. It will work. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in and we have a black and white 
Okay, white is ground, black is hot in this scenario. We can double check that too. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to snip and snip. That's easy. Don't snip them both together, just one at a time. Let's go ahead and take and we'll strip a little bit. Here's the simple way to do it without a multimeter. And that is just strip just a little bit of your wire on both ends. Don't touch them together yet. Or never touch them together. But then take and strip a little wire off the new fixture. Now, LEDs, they are uh, polarity specific. So we'll go ahead and we'll turn it on. We're going to take, we're just going to touch. We'll touch red to white and black to black. And as we notice, nothing happens. We have a red, we have a white. White usually in trailers signifies ground. It's always good to test it though with a multimeter or you can make a makeshift tester. Now let's see, we're going to go black to red here, which is red to red, and we've got light. So we meet, so we know that we have the polarity correct. So we know that we have to connect our black wire to our white wire. We've got a little bit stripped here. Let's go ahead and take the positive side. So this black one, let's do that one first. That way we don't have to worry about accidentally grounding it out. We're going to add a little extra strip to the wiring. Make sure it stays away from this little guy over here. If we want, we can take that little guy, just kind of put him up, get him out of the way for a minute. Don't lose him though. Okay. Now, on our LED light, the red was positive, the black was ground, so we're going to take, we're going to strip just a little bit more. We want probably about a half inch, because we're going to twist it a little bit. So there. Make sure we have our end splice, our cramper ready, and we're going to go ahead and twist them. Take our end splice, press it on, make sure that there is no bare wires exposed, make sure everything goes inside the end splice. Now for me, I'm just going to come in, I'm going to grab the correct die and crimp all the way through. Once it releases, I know it's crimped, I'm going to just second time, make sure I get the entire section crimped together. Do a little tuggy test. That crimp is good. That connection is good. Now. Let's go ahead and continue with doing our negative side. Now, if by accident we do touch this to negative or this to ground somewhere, it's not going to arc because it's all part of the ground system. Come back in. Let's, let's, crimp, let's, let's strip just a little bit more. Get by that half inch mark. And Come down here, catch just a little bit more. And when you are stripping wire with strippers, make sure you uh, do not use too small of a uh, cutter. There's different sizing on them. That way you do not cut any wires. And as you see, the light comes on. Why? Because we have power, it's 12 volt. Low voltage, we're safe. Let's go ahead and turn it off though. So, there we go. As you see, I did not get harmed in this. Low voltage, little stuff like this is fine. High amperage and high voltage, no, don't do that. If you're messing around with your batteries in your uh, trailer, if you're messing around with AC, turn the power off. Be safe. Even 12 volt itself could be dangerous at high amps. So, all right, you hear it? Crimped it two times, give a little pull test. It stayed together, we're good. We can do a little test real quick. On, off, on, off. There we go. Now we just shove these back up in the hole. Try not to pinch the wires when you shove them up. 
make sure that they're in the hole. Sometimes you might have to kind of play to enlarge that hole. Sometimes the manufacturers don't give, give you too much manipulation room. They don't expect you to be replacing these. Oh, I should have taken the lenses off before I did that, but again, we just do a squeeze test. Squeeze it. And they come down, fall on the ground, and get lost forever. No, I know where it's at. And we're going to go and we're going to Start putting these in the same hole. Now, there is six screws that came out. So I've got two on the outer edges, two on the outer edges. And then there's two holes right next to the switch. I am going to locate the uh, hole that has not been screwed into yet, where there's fresh material. And I'm going to use that because we're dealing with paneling. And it's not that great for going in and out of with a screw, unscrewing and screwing it in. So that way these will have a good bite. And again, just aim for the hole. Do not go crazy with your drill if you're using one. Or even your screwdriver, your hand one. Just get it up there snug is all you need. You don't want to strip out those holes. And we're going to look and Okay, that is the new hole. Right? Oh, no, this is the new hole. like that and there we go one more screw and I know that these were opposite of each other so I know that this is the hole to put in now let's throw these lenses on and let's give it a test we got our one light, we got off, we got our two lights. So much better. It's unbelievable how much more light these put out. They put out a uh, brighter light, a whiter light. In the morning, I used to put on both uh, lights in our uh, main living area. I'll spin you around and show you. So, right here. You can see we've got two lights up there. I used to put both of those on to illuminate the area. Now I can just put one on and it illuminates the area. So they do a really nice job. All right, there it is. Very simple project. Just take your time. Uh, don't use those wire nets. Uh, butt connectors, end connectors, uh, are the best option soldering heat shriek tubing all right so from the dingy to the clean from the dim to the bright that easy again the links in the description below where you can pick up these lights they were actually very reasonably priced uh, it was going to cost us actually more to buy led light bulbs and replace all the bulbs than it was to actually buy the entire fixture. So if this helped you out and you got something from the video, please hit that like button, subscribe, share, and until next time, you happy camping.